Yes. All right. Opening lesson. Man, I cannot tell you. I will, most, if not all of these mistakes, I have made personally. Um, and I probably still make a hell of a lot of them every day. So the first thing I want you to know about mistakes is make them. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because at the end of the day, there, there are no mistakes. There's only lessons. And you learn by falling down and then getting back up. You know, I have a, I have a son, three years old, and if he does something or if he's climbing on the couch, he's going to fall off. He's going to learn not to do that again. So a lot of what you learn as a child is 100% is related to the same process in business and entrepreneurship. And us, as an entrepreneur, we don't have anybody to really teach us. We're kind of teaching ourselves along the way and figuring it out. And it's hard-ass work. And it's scary. So what I hope to do today is outline some of the biz biggest mistakes that I've made and that I see other entrepreneurs making. And I've been a consultant for seven years. Um, and I have also, and I still pay, many, many, uh, many mentors an ugly amount of money to continue to help make sure that I stay on track with what I do in my businesses as well. Okay? So, 25 biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make. Number one, they focus too much on perfection. Guys, I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of this stuff may seem like common sense, but it's also very important to hear and remember and get back through your skull again because your business needs to be kept simple. Do not overcomplicate your business. Okay? Keep it very, very, very simple. Because if you don't understand, well, by God, your customer ain't going to understand it either. So keep it simple. So too many people try to make sure it's perfect. I'm a big believer in good is good enough. Okay? If it's good, good enough, get it out there. Go make a big mess, and then you can clean it up later when you, once you've made some money. Okay? So the stars don't have to align. Good is good enough. Write that down. Good is good enough. I learned that from Dan Kennedy. Good is good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Too many entrepreneurs try to make it perfect. Don't try to make it perfect. Try to get it out there. That'd be good on a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I will lie. I, I write these inspirational things. Good, you're going to have a lot to think. I'll lie. <laughs> um, number two, they lack true understanding of the importance of marketing. This, is, this should be number one. Um, so these are in no particular order, if you're wondering. Sorry about that. This is why I like my paper stuff. Marketing, my friends, is king. I don't care what your product or service is. If you put the best chef in one shop and the best marketer in the other shop and an okay chef, I guarantee you every single time the marketer shop will win. Every time. Because if people don't know about your product and service or your, or your, your plate of food or restaurant or whatever, then it doesn't matter how good your food is. Make sense? You have to constantly focus on marketing. Mark, you are the marketing officer of your business. Don't worry about being the chief executive officer. Give that role to someone else. You are the marketing officer. You have to focus on marketing. Someone else, Beth, can print and embroider your pillows. If you can figure out how to get a 1,000 people a month doing this, that's your job. Your job is to grow the business, and you can't grow the business flipping pizzas. You grow the business by letting people know about it, creating systems around that, making sure it's profitable, and then scaling it as high as possible. That's how you grow your business, marketing. Understand this. If you understand anything about this group, it's about marketing. Marketing, marketing, marketing. So marketing is king. 2B, most entrepreneurs are worried about spending as little money as possible on marketing because they don't want to waste money on marketing. Well, I will tell you this, that if you start working with me on any level and attending these groups, I'm going to show you how to not waste money. Because Dustin, we know how to not waste money anymore. We know that if you spend a $700 ad, that you have to sell $170 products in order to make money, make that money back from that ad. It's called ROI, return on investment. You tend, but yeah, I'm with you. Is it 10? Yeah, you know, it's like, oh shit. But but regardless, yeah, no. Ten. I spent seven hundred bucks on an Addy's helping me make money with this. So. You get the point. See, I didn't do very good at math. I don't give a shit. I want your market. <laughs> um, so, 
you know, marketing on Craigslist and all this stuff is great because it's free and you can social media is free and this is free. Bullshit. You get results by running an ad for $700 and seeing how much money you make exactly from that ad. Return on investment. So that means you have to track when you get into that in a moment. So don't be so focused on spending as little money as possible. You must be willing and able to outspend your competition. And we all have competition. Outspend it. If you can outspend your competition consistently, and the only way you can do it consistently is because you know that your marketing is getting results and is profitable, I guarantee you if you can outspend your competition, you'll win every time. So yes, the ability to spend money on marketing is important. So don't be the cheap person on the marketing. You can be smart about it and frugal, but once you prove that your marketing works, then scale it. So instead of seven, spending 700 on that ad, maybe you want to run five ads in that magazine or whatever. But test small, we'll get there. Another example, if you're gonna do direct mail, try something different. Everybody's mailing a letter with a stamp or a naked, uh, naked mail postcard. Mail it a FedEx box. Spend a little bit more to get in front of the people that you want to get in front of, to get noticed, to get attention. Does that make sense? If I, got, if I get a piece of letter or a FedEx box, guess which one I'm going to open first when I get home. That's my A plus pile, is the FedEx box. I'm going to see what's it worked on me. Uh, Did it? On refinance stuff, if someone sent something about refinancing and, and, and I opened it, actually just recently. Okay. Anything like that, I've thumbed through and I tear it up and throw it away. <laughs> My wife apologized for opening up your green envelope with the bluegrass leaf. You know, I opened that up and started I'm like, that's good, you got to do it. Hmm. She thought it was a Christmas card. I think it was a Christmas card. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I wanted to show that. So the key is, you know, stand out, spend more. Spend three bucks versus 49 cents or whatever stamp is nowadays. Um, you've got to consistently generate new leads. Again, I love marketing, so I can do a whole day and all the time marketing. We've got 25 mistakes to go through and, I'm, I, and I talk too much sometimes. But it's all about marketing. Consistently got to generate new leads. You must always be building your list. Your list is your most valuable asset. Period. Caveat. I don't care what your list size is. I care how profitable your list is. List profitability, not list size. You may have a million people on your list, but if no one buys, it doesn't matter how big your list is, right? If you have 100 people on your list and they all buy, that's the list you want. Cool? Always be building your list. Don't ever turn off that faucet, ever. And it's a faucet. So right. So if you can only, Beth, I'm going to use you for a lot of examples today, probably. Um, if you can only make so many pillows, then I'm, and, you're, and you're crammed up right now, and you don't want, to, want that to be the bottleneck, and you can, excuse me, turn your marketing faucet on or off, or I'm sorry, up or down. Right. So you can have it drip a little bit. And during the slow times, when it's slow, whatever time of year it is for your all's businesses, turn it up. When people are not spending money because people aren't buying that time of year, that's when you double your market. And the only way to know if, you're, if the money you spend on your market works is to test it and track it. Extremely important. Ye who can generate leads and sell those leads wins every single time. Marketing, marketing, marketing. So, so far, good is good enough, and then marketing. Number three. Most entrepreneurs do not have multiple income streams. I'm here to tell you that every rich person that I know has multiple income streams, more than they can count on their hand. It's very important to have multiple income streams. One is a dangerous number, and I think I have that as another bullet point. So look for ways to spiderweb your business. When I say spiderweb your business, it means this. I have a business. This is, for example, let me back a second. This group is a spiderweb off of my business. Because I love entrepreneurship, and I want to help other people, and I have a skill set, and I have a knowledge I believe that I can help other people with. So it's a spider web. It's another thing that I took off of all this stuff that I'm doing. So I personally have a mind map of, my, of who I am. So I have a big old mind map, and here's me right here, right? And then I've got this business here, and this business does this, that, and that. And then I've got that business there, and that business does that and that. And then I've got that, da 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 right? So every skill or problem you solve or every, can be spiderwebbed into something else. You know, you've got a hair dryer for dogs thing. Can you spiderweb that and use that in something else? Can you take that technology and put it into a different product? Right? So there's, look for other ways to generate revenue with your business. Can you not do pillows, but can you do toilet paper? 
Who knows? Can you do other stuff? Can you take what you've got now that you have a list of customers and spider with our, our machine does clothing. Okay. So it's kind of disguising. You give my point. Look for ways to spider web your business. Multiple income streams. Now you may not have multiple income streams now or, or or be that focused on it because you're focused on your one business, which you should, but you have to be thinking about multiple income streams. Number four, they focus too much on cost control.